As far back as I could remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Martin Scorsese's 1990 crime drama is based on the true story of Henry Hill and his rise to the top of New York's organized crime scene. The movie follows 30 years in Henry's life, starting with the 1950s teenager who parked cars for local mobsters, who then found himself undertaking more important jobs. And of course, then he settled down and got married, all while continuing to climb the ranks of the mafia, but hold on a second, I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't want to talk about the story. Instead, I want to take some time to analyze how a story, how this story was told. When you read a book, there are only two storytellers, the author and your imagination. But when watching a movie, the storytelling comes from the scriptwriter, the director, and the actors, even the lighting, the production design, the props, costumes, music, and needless to say, the editing. And the peculiar thing about editing is that it begins with the camera itself. What I find so special about Goodfellas is the use of tracking shots, which, in the case of the famous Copacabana sequence, wasn't done with a dolly and track, but rather with what was then a relatively new tool, the Steadicam. So what can the three-minute Steadicam shot tell us about Henry Hill's character and the world he lives in? How can the use of the camera be optimized to tell the story? You're watching Screenview Mirror. I'm your host, Emma, and this is my take on Goodfellas. It's worth mentioning that the Steadicam shot wouldn't have happened had it not been for logistical necessity. The crew had no choice but to go through the back exit since they weren't allowed to film the main entrance of the Copacabana Club. Surprisingly, the whole scene was shot in a matter of hours since it required only eight takes. In 2015, Larry McConkey, the cameraman who filmed the shot, gave an interview to Filmmaker Magazine explaining the magic behind the lens. He said, I had to be wide to follow them down the stairs because otherwise it would be a shot of the tops of their heads, but when they got to the bottom of the stairs, they turned a corner and they would disappear if I didn't catch up to them. So he asked them to stall at the bottom of the stairs so he could catch up, allowing the camera to move continuously. Indeed, note that the motion of the shot is very fluid. The camera never stops. I think we can compare this shot to a ballet where the actors and camera crew are basically dancing with each other, maneuvering through the story. So not only do we have this kind of anticipatory movement with the camera leading the actors, but it's almost as if the framing aligns with our own POV as the viewer, as if we were really there, as if Henry is simply leading the way for us, welcoming us into his world. Then there was the other problem of having the actors' backs facing the camera for so long. So McConkie decided to have Ray Liotta turn around and talk to someone, that's how the couple was brought into the scene and how Henry Hill uttered the famous line, Every time I come here, every time you do, would you work? And because there were a lot of extras on set, they got someone to stand at the door and ask Liotta to give him a tip, which in itself echoed the character of Henry Hill. McConkie said, we structured events within the shot that covered the limitations of not being able to cut in order to give it pace and timing. What I didn't expect, and what I only figured out later, was that all those interactions ended up being the heart and soul of the shot, because Ray incorporated his character into those moments. I think that even the whole idea of tracking Henry as he takes another route, going underground through the back door, literally cutting corners, reflects his life in the mob and mirrors the story of Goodfellas. He's not supposed to be in the kitchen, just like he wasn't supposed to be at JFK for the Lufthansa heist, but being part of the mob entailed being in places where other people weren't allowed to be. It meant that he could buy people off, in the short run anyway, and get to where he thought he wanted to be. The only objection Scorsese had to McConkie's study cam shot was that he wanted a table to come out of nowhere and fill the frame. And this is what we see at the end of the long take when Henry and Karen instantly get their front row seats. And again, this is not unlike the instant rewards Henry enjoyed while working for the Mafia. Indeed, the actions of the sequence really mirror the story, the details adding a third dimension to our understanding of Henry's world. Overall, I really appreciate this shot because although a lot of work went into it, McConkie makes it seem so effortless. It doesn't even feel like the camera is there. It just feels like we, as viewers, are there. Great editing doesn't have to be explicitly noticeable. What matters most is that it tracks the story. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this week's video. 
keep watching movies, keep reflecting on cinema and reflecting cinema to others. I think that editing really does start on set and I hope I was able to show that at least to some degree in this video essay. But in the meantime, stay tuned. I'll see you next week. This was Screenview Mirror.